Hello everyone, um, Simon here again from Aquabatics and um, just checking in with you on a topic that I have no business talking about, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we're here and I'm going to introduce Tom, uh, our retail ops manager for our Calgary and Edmonton stores here pretty quickly. Um, those of you who know me know that I don't really outfit boats. I open them out of the package and, you know, put a little foam here, a little foam there and then just the foot pegs and then I'm pretty much off to the races. So I've spent the last 20 plus years of my life being completely underprepared for this. So I'm often quite embarrassed on uh, online uh, with customers when I am unable to really explain how to how to outfit a boat even though I've been paddling for such a long time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass you along to Tom who has done a lot of boat outfitting and he's got some really great tips and tricks for the for the dagger contour ergo outfitting. Uh, we'd love to see questions come up. I'm basically going to be monitoring this while Tom's chatting. So if you do have questions that you'd like to cover, just pop them in the comments and I'll see those and we'll put them in front of Tom as we go along and as they make sense. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring Tom up on the screen here and uh, put you in his more than capable hands and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So like I say, let us know you're here in the comments, uh, let it pop your questions our way and we, uh, we'll go from there. Hopefully you've got a cold beer in your hand and a boat in front of you or something like that. So I'm going to sign off now and uh, pass you over to Tom. All right, Tom, it's all you. Awesome. Wicked. Thanks, Adam. Cool. Thanks to anybody for tuning in. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Right now, it's a little awkward. You know, we have people coming by the shop picking up folks every now and then, and we kind of have to throw them outside and be like, there you go, enjoy. Uh, just super awkward for me. I love being hands on with getting you in your new boat, getting it outfitted, getting it set up for you. Um, couldn't find any resources for dagger that haven't been done in the last like five years so figured why not hop on here and give a bit of a rundown on the contour outfitting how to set it up for you the first time and be there to answer the questions for you guys so yeah dagger overall i'm super impressed with their outfitting for me it just has such a great fit it really connects your body to the boat unlike a lot of other outfittings for boats out there i think it's just super awesome um, there are some outfittings that probably get you even more locked in the boat, but at the sacrifice of a bit of safety. So I feel like Dagger really does a good job of blending the two together. You've got a super safe boat, a step out pillar and so on, and uh, but still really good connection to the body. So yeah, without further ado, we'll kind of take it from there. Um, just a bit of a rundown on Dagger outfitting. From the safety side, some of the positives I really like about this boat, uh, you've got the rotomolded track through the center of the boat and the rotomolded step out pillar in the front, which is super handy. Uh, it's there in case you do get into a vertical pin scenario, it's a safer way of climbing out of the boat. Uh, it's also kind of nice, it's contoured quite nice at the inside, so when you're grabbing it, shouldering the boat, it's got a nice handle to grab onto. Uh, so a really solid, safe option there. They've also done a really cool feature with the front a bulkhead where it's on two different plates. Hopefully we'll get an image of that up shortly that kind of shows that, but it separates between the two. Uh, there it is, awesome. And so it really allows you to just fill in the entire void of the front of the boat so that you can't have any foot entrapment issues. Your feet are not gonna slide past there in any way. So it's a super safe, I think really well designed uh, foot brace system as well. And then we got a couple of trips, uh, tick, sorry, a couple of little ideas that maybe you can use that'll uh, make it hopefully even safer. Um, we'll get into that when we go to outfitting the foot brace. Other than that, unique to Dagger is the front seat uh, lift. So that lifts up the front thigh braces on you. Um, or sorry, the front of the seat pan, which helps engage you into the thigh braces. Pretty unique, uh, just Dagger, and at one point Waveport was doing that. I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, but yeah, really, really comfortable. It also takes some of the weight off the lower back. So just a little bit better to sit in for a long day of paddling. And then just super durable outfitting. Once you've set it up once, you're going to find out it's a little bit of work. It's locked in. You don't have to go and retight things and jig here and there. Uh, once it's set up for you, it's good to go. Um, with that, there's the negative where if you do have multiple people using the boat, um, it can be a bit of a struggle to switch it between different paddlers. And then the one other thing you might hear about dagger boats is they tend to leak a little bit. Uh, it goes for any boat that has a bunch of holes drilled in it. Um, 
you know, Dagger and Verona and all those guys are going to have a bit of leaky boats. Uh, it's definitely warranted, uh, but also uh, what a lot of people, like Simon maybe, uh, do is they get in their boat, freshly unwrapped, pop in the water, and it starts leaking. Typically, Dagger boats ship very loose bolts. Um, so if you haven't gone through and tightened those all up, you're good to go. Um, then, you know, they're going to leak a little bit if you haven't done that. The other thing you can do, and a lot of people do do, is pull the bolts out, put duct tape down, reinsert them. I don't think it's super necessary anymore now that they have the rubberized blockers, uh, but you could do a dab of uh, aqua seal or silicone on those as well to tighten them up. We won't really go into those. But overall, amazingly well-built boats, super durable. Track in the bottom makes sure that the hull shape's gonna last forever. Step up pillar super safe. Front ball head super safe. And the outfitting salts are durable. Sort of it. We don't have any questions pop out. We're gonna hop right into kind of what I do if you bought a new boat and you wanna get it set up for yourself. Uh, first thing is basically to find your seating position. What typically you might wanna do is talk to, talk to your local shop, talk to some paddlers and friends who maybe own this boat that you're picking up uh, and see kind of what the general consensus is. Every boat's gonna have a sweet spot for where you wanna sit in it. Um, I own this boat here, the Dagger Phantom. And when I first saw it, I hopped in it, I was like, oh my, you can move that seat way forward. So that's what I did, I paddled it like pretty much a full season like that. Uh, I love the boat, but it just had got a little bit weird at times. Uh, and Tim, one of our instructors, suggested I try moving the seat back. And so we did. I moved mine like three quarters of the way back of center. And the boat performs totally differently. It comes out with a little bit more speed. And it's way easier to control and turn edges when it's you know, locked in at speed. So uh, my personal preference for the Phantom, slightly back of center. But yeah, figure out what it is for the boat that you're checking out. Every boat's got a little bit different flavor. Um, things like the Rewind, if you want to be a little bit sporty or move that seat back. You want to be a little bit more forgiving, move it a little bit forwards. There's something you might need to play with a little bit. So start with the seating position and how to move that. Basically, to move your seat, uh, you've got five bolts you need to loosen up. There's two on the sides here on either side. And what they are is they're drilled through and they're connected to a brass bracket like that. So that's basically getting sandwiched up inside of a track that's in there. And the more you tighten it up, the more solid it's going to be. You want to loosen it up so that you can kind of feel inside. It's just a little bit loose. Don't loosen it all the way or else the screws will fall out and you'll have a bit of a hard time getting that back together. Uh, so just a little bit loose on these bolts here. There's also the one center bolt down the center of the bulkhead. You're going to want to loosen that up. I loosen them pretty darn easy. Every bolt is going to come with a little package. And you've got a four millimeter uh, Allen key tool in there for you. So that's basically all the tool you're going to need for that. Loosen them up. Loosen up this front front bolt here. And the seat's going to be able to slide back and forth. It needs quite a bit of suggestion to move. Uh, so I usually get a foot right in there and just give it a good boot, uh, kick it forward and back. The one thing that you might notice is in the center bolt track up here, you might be able to see it here, there's a bolt right there track. Um, that doesn't really define where the seat is very well. Because this frame can move a little bit, um, even though it's centered right now, that doesn't necessarily mean the seat is centered. If you want to figure out where the seat is, best actually reach inside the hole here, it's in behind your hip pad. And when you reach up in there, you'll kind of feel that bracket. And on either side of it, will feel a cutaway. And there's where the seat is able to move along that cutaway. And for me in the Phantom, I moved it back so that I have about one finger width of track available towards the rear of the boat. Um, you know, if you're not sure and you can't get any info, just start with it centered and see where it goes from there. If you're packing for overnight trips, maybe move forwards or if you're an instructor packing that gear full of safety rescue equipment, that kind of thing, maybe a little bit centered to forwards. Um, but yeah, feel free to play with that. Definitely, that's step one. Once you've got it seating positioned correctly, then you might want to also think about your seating within the boat. So whether you want to add some foam to that in terms of height or not. So Dagger does a great job of adding these to their foam kits. So these should come with your new Dagger boats as well. And it's just a seat pad, a uh, quarter inch thick. just going to help you elevate your seating position. Um, 
most of your retailers hopefully should have some stairs of these. I actually put three of them in my boat because I have no upper body. Um, but basically, the more height that you add underneath the seat, the more edge control you're going to have. However, the more height you add, the higher you're sitting in the boat, the more unstable it's going to be. So, you know, play with it a little bit, see what works for you. Uh, if you're a little bit short in the upper body like myself, definitely throw that in there. The way you're going to do it is pretty straightforward. Flies underneath the main foam here. So underneath the front of the seat pan, you'll feel there's actually a bungee right there. So once you pull that bungee off the hook, one on either side, then the front of the seat just slides open and allows you to shove that right in there. There you go. Uh, yeah, once you've got it in, pretty easy to pop those bungees back on. You can't see them. Uh, but you'll feel for them, and it's pretty obvious there's little hooks that they just grab right onto. That's getting that in there. Um, yeah, definitely suggest to use those if you're a little bit shorter in the upper body. Um, if you need spares, talk to your local dealer. They should have a few that you can really jack yourself up a little bit higher, and if you need that better edge control. After that, Probably your backrest is another thing you want to look at first off. Typically when they ship new, they ship quite low, so that these straps here are very loose. So basically if all I do with the back band, uh, really all you need to do is tighten those up to help bring it up a little bit higher. Um, once you crank these pretty tight, there's also a center strap in the middle. Pull that down just kind of finger tight, and that's just going to keep it in a nice secure location instead of rattling around. So you're less likely to sit on it when you're getting it in there. If you're finding that you don't have much ratchet here or here, um, there's just a little nub sticking out, then you can loosen off at the back of the back bend as well. It's going to allow more ratchet to come through or more of the zip strap here uh, so that they're less likely to fall inside of the thigh brace. Definitely do that. If they come, you push it and slide back a little bit too hard and they come out of the thigh brace ratchet, it can be super frustrating to get back in the boat. Make sure you're giving yourself, you know, when this is at its loosest point, two or three inches of spare strap at the end here uh, so that that doesn't happen to you. And then after that, uh, I would like to start with all the seating arrangements first. So the next piece is the hip pads. Hip pads are super nice. Um, they're easy to take right out. Basically a buckle on either side. You reach in here, unbuckle those two. They're going to be just velcroed in. Um, Really nice hip pads with dagger. What they give you is a little pocket on the back. You zip that open. You've got a pocket here that you can throw hip shims into. And if you've got a new boat, then you've got a tremendous supply of different hip shims. Basically, there's some flat ones in here, thick ones, thin ones, and ones that are cut on a contour. Uh, for me personally, I like to use as much as possible in there um, so that I'm super secure in the boat. And I like to give it a bit of shape. So the ones that are cut on an angle, pull one out so you can see it, like these guys here, I'll typically put the high point here at the top of my hip. It kind of goes that way in the boat. That's just going to help lock in the top of the hip pads and then narrow as it goes down towards the thigh, uh, really lock you in there. The more foam you can get in, the better, to a point. Uh, if you've put in so much that you can't get in the boat, well, you have to take it back it off. If your feet start to go numb, don't go ahead and take the shims out right away, but do position them in a higher position on the boat. So when you go to put it back in, we do Velcro in place. Make sure you elevate it a bit so that it's up flush or even higher than the cockpit rim. And that's going to help take some of the pressure off of the artery that's in there and allow that blood flow back into your feet. If you've done that and your feet are still going numb, then back it off. Take another hit shim out. Um, and don't be afraid to cut these up as well. Uh, what I do with mine is typically take, you know, the contoured one and put it in the top. Take one of these, cut it in half, and put a half of these in the top, and then add one more full one on top of that. So you've got a really good shape to the to the hip pad. Talk about that. Getting it back in the boat is pretty straightforward. You're basically just going to clip it back on there and uh, velcro it down. And then they actually have done a really nice job of putting a bit of Velcro on the end of these straps. So if you want to clean it up, 
they actually go throw in behind the boat as well, just in behind the support pillars of the seat. Yeah, just clean those straps up a little bit so you don't have them hanging out all the time. That's pretty much it. You can adjust the height riser as well. Just I've never had to do that, uh, but if you do, then it's a bit of a process. You have to take the whole seat pan out uh, and fix the straps on the inside. They get bolted into the side here. So it's not something you want to do, but if they stretch out over time, it is something you can do by just changing the holes that that strap is attached to that pull into the sides here. So don't do it off the hop, uh, but you know, over time they tend to stretch out. You might just do that after five or six years of owning a boat if it lasts that long. That's sort of it for the seating arrangement. After that, next step is maybe the thigh braces. So most people never adjust the hip for the thigh braces on the dagger boat. Um, but if you found that you know you got the new ripper and or sorry, not ripper, uh, the rewind, and you want to slide it all the way to the back and have some fun, uh, then you might find that the thigh braces end up pretty close or on top of your knee, which can cause bruising and a little bit of uncontrollable feel to the boat. Uh, so you can move those around. Not super hard to do. Basically, you're going to have a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt here. Center bolt and the rear bolt, you just want to loosen off. So, for that, you'll just need a Phillips head screwdriver and a finger. And on the inside, you'll find a little rubber thumb screw like this. So, just hold that in place with your one hand, loosen it off with the other hand. You don't have to take it all the way out for those two. Again, just loose for those two. The front bolt. You're gonna have to remove that one. It doesn't have that inside. It actually has uh, like an internal, or sorry, center one actually has an internal peanut. The front one does have a piece like that. So yeah, you just have to take that all the way off and you'll feel on the front of the thigh brace, different holes that those can go into. So if you do need to move it forwards and backwards, uh, loosen these two, take this one out, add it a hole forwards or a hole back wherever you need it to be so that it's comfortable for you. Typically what's comfortable for me is just having where the thigh hook catches just slightly back of my knee bone. Um, so anywhere from here to here is pretty good. Forwards on top of the knee, you'll probably bruise quite a bit. Anywhere too far back feels really awkward and you'll actually lose edge control. So the strongest point is going to be right up and kind of the meat just behind your knee bone there. That's it for getting seating uh, in the boat. After that, comes down to the bit of the tricky part. Uh, you're going to have to get inside the boat and work with the foot braces. So foot braces are always a little bit tricky to figure out. Typically, Dagger sends the well, like a big foam package with three chunks of foam for either side of the bulkhead for your feet. Uh, so there's quite a bit of foam in there. So you want to try and judge that a little bit with how far forward or backwards you foot braces. Typically, I'd suggest putting your paddling shoes on if you can. Uh, so whether you're wearing a shoe or a booty or whatever, just to get a good feel for it, sit in the boat, pull the foot brace all the way in so that it's just kind of touching with your toes extended. And that's about where you'll want it to be because you're going to add about three inches of foam inside of there if you use all the foam again. So just kind of pull it in. If your toes can touch, pretty good. Um, then you're ready to kind of get it outfitted. First thing you want to do is, oh, I guess, move it around. To move it, it's pretty easy. Just remove the thumb screws on the rails. So there's two of them, one on either side. And they just look like this guy here. Take those off, pull the rails off of the, the bolts that are in there, and slide it forwards and backwards. Again, so your feet are touching, put that bolt back on and just leave it there to begin with. There's always a bit of play you can do even once your foam's all been cut for the boat. So it's not super imperative that you get it dialed right off the hop. Uh, but get it close enough that you don't hopefully have to adjust it later on. Once you've taken that off, split it back, then you want to adjust those plates you were talking about that uh, eliminate that foot and traffic issue. So there they are there. It's really easy. You're basically going to loosen those two bolts, get your hands in, and just separate the two with your hands. You basically have to push that top one up into the top of the boat, pull the bottom one down. Uh, Crank them as hard as you can so that they're really filling up the whole void. Give it a bit of a shake. Sometimes they can also twist a little bit. Uh, and you should be able to fill up pretty much the entire front of the void uh, that's up there in the front of the boat. Once you've done that, tighten them back in, you're good to go. Then you're going to go and grab your first block of foam. First block, this guy here, the thick one at the bottom, it's 
got the Velcro on the back. Getting it in there can be super frustrating, uh, but not horrible. Uh, you're basically just going to want to get inside the boat, put the foot brace in there, get inside the boat, and use your foot to really jam it back. The goal at first is basically to get the top lip in to the top of the foot brace area. If you can do that, great. Uh, then you're pretty pretty well good to go. It means you've got pretty short legs. If you can't, then you're going to have to do some cutting on that. Um, so to cut, it's kind of an eyeball effect. I usually get the block in and then kind of feel for where it's overhanging. Typically, you're going to get the top in, but the bottom's going to be overhanging that lip that's at the bottom of the boat. So that's where I'll start trimming. To trim the blocks, pretty easy. You can take a marker if you can get it in there, but I find it a bit awkward. I just trim bit by bit and work my way down on the blocks, kind of cutting around here. And you can cut a bit off the top if you prefer as well. Um, but I usually just start from the bottom, trim a little bit in here. Trim tools that work well, uh, I usually always just grab standard Facto knife. Um, that works really, really well. As long as you got a sharp one, you're good to go. Just kind of slice away and cut as you go. Um, but definitely the big hacksaw works as well. Uh, another really good tool is the drywall saw. If you've got one of those, they work incredibly well. Um, but yeah, grab that and start trimming away. Start to do it piece by piece. The big mistake here is overdoing it. Um, once they're cut, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, but yeah, cut that away, cut it down to size until you can get it in there and it's filling up. 90% of the void. Doesn't have to be perfect. We got two other blocks in there that are going to help fill that void anyway. So get it in so that it's easy to get in and easy to take out. One other tip that I've kind of got um, for this, and this is something I do to my boat. It's something an old uh, wave sport paddler showed me maybe 15 years ago, is the Swiss cheese technique. Uh, so I do this to pretty much all of my foot blocks, the first ones I throw in. Um, it's pretty much what I've done is taken a one inch Dremel tool or a wood boring tool like that and attached it to a drill and basically just drilled out a bunch of holes. It doesn't go all the way through, uh, just kind of all the way down to the bottom. And what you've got here is kind of two things. Uh, Tanya Fo showed me this uh, from, from Wavesport back in the day. She did it as a way of saving weight for expedition. Uh, I think the weight savings are pretty minimal. Uh, but what I do like about it is it creates a much softer base cushion. So if you do end up pitoning something really hard or bowing into something, uh, you're far less likely to bruise your uh, your uh, ankle bone, your feet, or, or basically just avoid a bit of injury. I like kind of how squishy these get once you've done that. Uh, so I do that for all mine. Um, if you have questions on that, hit us up. Uh, but yeah, basically just bore it out until it becomes a nice squishy base cushion. And that's sort of where you... A good idea for your first cushion just to make it a little bit softer. After that, your next cushion is this guy here. I'm going to bring it in close. You can kind of see it's the checkerboarded looking one. They do this as the next one because it's got a little bit more open cell foam to it. So it's again a little bit squishier than the third piece. Um, so yeah, that's sort of that middle one. Uh, adds a nice squishy layer, adds a little bit of almost that checkerboard creates a bit of that air vibration dampening. Uh, so yeah, it's a nice one to use, hopefully a bit safer if you use all of them. What I tend to do with that is actually start tracing it out. So you've got a good base with the first one that you've cut, that guy there, um, or the non-Swiss cheese version if you prefer. And after that, once that's been trimmed, you're gonna pop that on top of it. On the back, you've got a white backing, which is a peel and stick. Trace out just a little bit showing around there so that you're kind of overhanging maybe a quarter of an inch and start trimming that away all the way around. I tend to leave this side here where these two meet really nicely connected, but then work a little bit further away on the outside as well. What that's going to do is just clean up any of those imperfections from eyeballing it before. Uh, and because these are a peel and stick, you just kind of wedge them in there, and they're going to basically glue and stick to the outside perimeter of the boat, uh, which is really good. It's going to stop a lot of water from filling up into the front board of the boat, so if you don't have bow bags up there, it's going to give you a bit more time to self-rescue in case of a swim. Uh, but yeah, the tighter you can get that second and third block, the, the better it's going to be. It's going to eliminate any chance of foot entrapment further on, uh, and 
and basically just eliminate any water from sneaking up there so that you have more time to self rescue. Third piece looks like that there. Just a closed cell foam piece. You're going to do the same thing as you did before. Put it over top of your second piece this time. Anything that you've trimmed away from that, you're now going to trim away from this. Uh, again, maybe let it overhang a quarter of an inch or so just to keep working it out as you get further from that original bulkhead. And that's going to fill up the whole bow. That pretty much does it. The nice part about this whole system, because they peel and stick, uh, as you glue them down to the previous layer, and the original layers on the Velcro, they all stick together in the one solid block. And they can come in and out very easily. Um, so if you do need to pull your foot block out, uh, then yeah, it just comes out as one. You just rip it out, and the Velcro should be the only thing holding it in place. Go there. That's pretty much it for the basic outfitting and using up the foam that's provided in the boat. Um, for me, there's a couple of things that I like to do personally. Uh, I've got relatively skinny legs. Uh, so I always like to have a little bit of foam that I can push on the outside of the boat with. So any of the leftover foam that you might have from these blocks is a good thing to use that for. It can go underneath the flap here and just stick to the outside of the boat where your knee hit. That's just going to stop you from bruising up the outside of your knee at all and give you something else to push on out there as well. Um, you can also pick up rolls of foam uh, from your retailers as well to do the same thing. Um, or if uh, you've got a Jackson retailer, they typically have the Jackson ones that have a peel and stick on there. They're really comfy and comfortable to throw on there, so they peel and stick on the outside. So if you've found you've, you've got too much of a gap between the outside of your knee and the outside of the boat, maybe think about putting a bit of foam out there as well. They don't have a peel and stick. Uh, the glue you want to use is called H2 glue. It's basically the only glue that works on polyethylene boats to stick foam to them. Uh, so yeah, check us out if you need a uh, with finding the right glue on that stuff. Polyethylene is pretty hard to stick to. Once that's all said and done, you're pretty much ready to go paddle your boat. But like I was saying before, you probably want to go through and tighten up everything that's on the boat. They come, they ship really, really loose. So just go through, tighten up all your bolts. You can kind of go until you actually see that the rubber washer starts to bend inward slightly, and uh, but don't overdo it. And if you found any of the grab handle bolts, especially the ones back here loose. Uh, you might need to talk to your dealer about fixing those as well. They typically ship pretty snug, um, but they do loosen off every now and then. They have an anti-theft device on them, so it's quite a unique uh, anti-theft torch bit that you need for that to work. Uh, your dagger dealer should be able to help you out uh, with tightening those up if they do become loose. Uh, but typically, they're pretty tight. And that is opening your dagger bolt. After some questions. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, so I've got a question here from Kevin. It's it's not directly related to uh, it's not directly related to the outfitting, but I believe he's got a bit of a crack in uh, the back of one of his boats, and uh, he's just wondering about it's a sort of a dent slash crack, um, and what your thoughts would be on on how to repair that. He was going to put a picture up, but we haven't seen that yet. So just wondering if you'd give some insight into that Tom cool yeah um yeah uh, fortunately polyethylene boats will crack over time uh and dent and things like that um the nice part about dagger boats is the, the the plastic's actually quite strong we don't see it very often uh, we do see dents pretty regularly especially on older nomads they just tended to piton on into things harder um but the the cracking's pretty rare so if it's just a dent, uh, first thing you want to do is basically just put it out in the hot sun if it's not like snowing like it is today uh, and let that sun kind of warp it and, and heat it up and maybe it just pops out on its own. If it's a pretty significant dent, you want to look for two things. Uh, if there's any cracking in it or if there's any white kind of plastic stretching appearance. If those have happened, you've definitely diminished the strength of the boat uh, and it might be worth considering uh, Professional repair if you can find it or, or a replacement boat at that point. Um, if there isn't any plastic stretching, probably safe to continue paddling the boat once you get the dent out. Typically, you just want to add a whole bunch of hot water to it to your first bet. Um, so boil up a hot kettle of water, put the boat up on its nose if it's in the nose or tail if it's in the tail or whatever, and pour it in there, let it sit for five minutes, uh, heat up, and hopefully it pops out on its own. If it doesn't, 
you can get the broomstick handle and try and work it or a foot in there if you can get the bulkhead out and start pushing on it. Um, but yeah, once it's softened up, it's usually pretty easy to pop those dents out with just a little bit of pressure. Uh, if the hot water is not doing it, you can use a heat gun. Uh, but again, you don't want to melt the plastic at that point. You just want to get it warm enough. So uh, if you've got a temperature controllable heat gun, that's pretty good. 800 degrees uh, ish, but don't get too close to the boat. If it starts to turn color and look shiny, uh, then you're actually melting the plastic at that point, which can weaken it over time. For cracks, it's a bit of a different question. Um, but yeah, crack repairs to do yourself are not super fun but they're doable. Uh, Liquid Logic's got a pretty good tutorial on their YouTube channel um, on doing a plastic repair job using a stick or a piece of, of the plastic itself from the boat. Um, so welding rods, maybe your, your local dealer has those. If you do, then it's not too bad. Basically, if the crack's not super long, you just wanna stop it from continuing to crack. So you're gonna take a drill bit, uh, pretty small, uh, four mil, five mil drill bit, Drill it out on the ends of those cracks so that it stops spreading. Heat it up using a heat gun if you've got it. And then you're going to basically, once it turns shiny, then you're melting the plastic. Get that uh, welding rod in there and spin it as you go. And you're basically pulling the plastic from beside the crack towards the crack and kind of hoping that it all pulls together. That's sort of the, the basic uh, welding technique. There's definitely better ones out there. Uh, but they might require some, some expertise at that point. Uh, so then hit up a, a local plastic welder if, you, if that's not working for you. Hopefully that answers it. Awesome. I'm going to try and track down that. Uh, I'm going to try and track down that uh, tutorial and post it in the comments here, Tom. Once we're done here, uh, there was one more uh, from Blaine. It should say, "Can you adjust the back and height?" But it should say, "Back band height." Yeah, to a certain degree. I mean, every boat's going to have a limit to how high it can go, uh, and that's going to be more or less determined by the, the height of what's attaching the back band of the boat. So in this case, you've got the two straps that pull to the height of the cockpit rim back there. So you can adjust it to maximum height is basically cranking those straps so that they are more or less in line with the height of the rear cockpit. If you want it to be lower, that's pretty easy. Uh, it's basically there's a strap underneath that that you can crank down on, and that will bring the height of the back band down. Um, if you've got these too tight, then it's going to limit that, so you have to loosen the top to pull down the back. Um, so to some degree, it's adjustable, uh, but you might also, if you want a really high back band, just you might have to keep everything a little bit loose, hop in the boat, and once you're in the boat, pull it up manually kind of tight, crank up those those ratchets to get in there. And that's sort of the best you can do if you like a really high back band. Uh, but they're definitely designed to, you know, be in a, a good comfortable position that allows really good body rotation. It won't limit you in that way. So hopefully you're just comfortable with, with the limitations that are provided within the boat. All right, well, thank you very much, Tom. And thank you very much, everyone else. Uh, it looks like we've got some uh, good banter going on in the comments here, but it, it seems like you've done a outstanding job of uh, of explaining everything because no one is. It doesn't seem like we've got any more any more questions at the moment. Uh, let me just see. Hang on. The thigh strap. Oh boy. Okay. What's that? <laughs> yeah, Nigel. I think I, Nigel was asking about retensioning the thigh strap there. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'll chuck that up for everyone. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, it just popped up. So. Uh, Nigel, I don't know. I think you probably mean uh, getting a little bit extra coming out the end here so that it's not popping in on you. I'll kind of go into two parts. So if you've got these uh, a little bit too tight, then a lot, a lot of what happens to people is these, as you loosen them off and push on your back band, they can actually pop out inside the back band like that, which I now get to show you how frustrating it is to try and fix. Um, what you need to do is basically refeed that back through uh, and get it into a tiny slot that's up here in the front. The only way to do it is basically pull off your hip pad if you need to and then feed it up there until you can get your finger right through the hole that's in the front here. Once you do that, typically you can grab the front of the strap, pry it out through that hole. When you have it here, give it a really solid bend, like really solid. 
And that's just going to give it some shape so that when you feed it up through the next slide, it just naturally pops up in there. And that's, that's getting it back in. Now, hopefully, you can also do the adjustment so that doesn't have to have to happen to you anymore. But that's done actually in behind the back fan. So basically, if you don't have enough showing here, then it's because your back fan strap is too tight back here. So what you want to do is back here on either side, you've got two separate ones. So basically, you might have to do it only on one side or maybe on the other. Uh, it's actually sewn in between. So, you, you know, if you're finding it's just your right side, then just focus on the right side. One. Basically, you want to loosen that off, which means feeding this strap through the, the locking buckle and then loosening it through the thumb screw buckle. And that should give you a little bit more to work with. So now when you're all the way towards the back of the boat, you've got a couple of inches showing and it's far less likely to pop all the way out of that. Hopefully that made sense. So I just, yeah, just to elaborate a little bit, just because we're here, we might as well talk to people. Uh, we've got um, a picture from Kevin. He sent us a picture of his, uh, which I'm sure there's a story behind, which would be probably nice to hear. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get myself out of this picture here. But basically, that's the damage that is done. So you can kind of see that horizontal crack and obviously quite a, quite a wee dent there. I wonder if that was a rock or a car. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted maybe if you wanted to just elaborate a bit on that, Tom. From yeah, now, can you stand it at all? I, I can't see the crack on that. Right on. Sorry, I need to get up close and personal. Oh yeah. Oh, it's the old Nomad piton. Uh, oh, it's at the rear though. That's kind of unusual. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Nomads being big rounded boats tends to they tend to see the pitons happen the most. Uh, and maybe it's because we creek in in Nomads, right? We're pushing our limits, and that's what the boats are designed for. Uh, but yeah, not uncommon. Uh, where the crack happened is actually kind of kind of great. Um, it's above waterline and it's at the back of the boat, which pretty much is, unless you're tail tapping a whole bunch of stuff, is pretty unlikely to to get hit again. Um, so yeah, getting that out, I don't think it's bad. Uh, you you've got no stretching of the plastic, so put that boat up on its stern, fill it full of hot water, see if it pops out. If it doesn't, you have to get some kind of help uh, pushing that out manually. So warm it up uh, and push it out. And then once you've got it kind of back to shape, then going about welding that crack is not bad at all. Uh, drill the two sides of where the crack ends. Try and find that YouTube video that hopefully Simon has a link to from Liquid Logic. And yeah, if you get some welding stick, then you should be able to rotate that through. If you can't find the, a, a welding stick, Talk to me, I can help you. Uh, but uh, if you're not from the Calgary or Edmonton area and you need a welding stick, uh, you just can't get your hands on it, what you can do is actually take some of the plastic from your boat. So what a lot of people will do is actually trim some of the back of their cockpit room here. Uh, because it's on the inside of the boat, it doesn't really matter how much you trim away from that. Uh, it's not going to impact the strength of the boat at all uh, as long as you don't go crazy. But yeah, trim a, a good length of, of plastic from there, and you can use that as your welding stick and just kind of work yourself from one end of the crack to the other. But it's actually a pretty, it's a big crack, but it, it's definitely repairable. That's a good one. So, uh, just, just to fill you in, apparently that was from a swim on the pipe stone. He said you've already seen the video. <laughs> I watched that earlier today. That's great. Yeah. That, I uh, went for a few rotations under a sidewinder, for sure. Ah, perfect. Um, so just just out of just out of funny interest sake here, I'm going to add something to the feed if people are still sticking around. Phil Phil Ellsworth just chimed in saying that he can definitely beat that. Uh, <laughs> he can definitely beat that. So just bear with me for one second, and I'm going to I'm going to add another picture here. Just give me a second. It looks like the next feed's gonna have to be a boat welding tutorial. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kevin, we might have to uh, borrow your boat for that one. <laughs> so looking at this, <laughs> I think 
We've got, oh, yeah. we've got we've got some good next level. Oh, hang on, I'll try and make that bigger for you, Tom. I'll get out of the picture. <laughs> well, is it cracked at the top, Phil? It looks okay. It, nice part about Jackson boats is they've got a really soft plastic. So you warm that up and it should pop back out again. But uh, yeah, it's a solid one. You might you might find there's some plastic stretching if you get a light on the inside of that boat and see if it's actually stretched out on the inside. But solid hit. Hopefully that's not the video that you shared with me from last season. <laughs> uh, awesome. Thank you very much, Tom. So I think uh, I think that's I think that's us. Um, it seems that everyone's got their questions in and, and all that good stuff, and there's been lots of good banter going on. So if nothing else, we've succeeded in getting a bunch of crew together talking a bit of talking a bit of trash and as good as. So uh, thanks everybody. <laughs> Blaine said Jackson boats will pop dents out in the hot sun. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, thanks. Thanks everyone for checking in. We're going to uh, we're going to wrap this up now, and we'll uh, we'll post this to our Facebook page, so it'll be be available for in perpetuity. And uh, hopefully, it was useful. And it's uh, and ringing in the weekend, which for many of us is probably going to be the same as every day of the last week. Um, for me, it just means I don't have to yell at my kids because to homeschool them. So hopefully, everyone's going to crack a drink tonight and have a good one. So thank you so much, Tom. I learned a ton from that, and. Thanks everyone for checking in and uh, have a great weekend and we'll, uh, we'll check in with another topic soon and hopefully we'll be all back out in the water in the, in the coming months. So thanks, thanks everyone. Have a great weekend and we'll, uh, we'll see you later. Thanks.